Okay, so you've just finished covering stoichiometry in your class with your students. They balanced equations, they've learned how to use factory label to get from moles of A to moles of B. You're looking for a good lab that you might do. Here's one I developed a few years ago that I really, really like. It's what I call a target lab, and it's one in which the students do some initial measurements very carefully, their grades depend on it. They then do the lab, carry it out, make observations, figure things out, and at the end, they come up to me with a mass that they think should be what their test tube and content should weigh, and we put it on the scale together, and they are graded according to how close it comes. I, re I do a lot of these target type labs with my students. I think they really are valuable because it's outcome based. They really do get graded on how carefully they do it. There's a write-up that follows as well, but most of their grade is dependent on how they did right then and there in the lab. They're graded by the scale, and that's a very impartial judge. So here's what it starts with. It starts with a nice Pyrex test tube, and um, we've got the little holder for that on the, so it doesn't roll off. And we're going to write these down. We'll see what kind of results we get right here. 31.43 grams for the mass of the empty test tube. What I like best about this lab is that it uh, involves common household baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and we're going to put a scoop of that in there, maybe a scoop and a half, okay, and they weigh it again. This now weighs the mass of the test tube and the baking soda. 37.04 grams. It fluctuates between 0.03 and 0.04. That's important to point out. Some students will see a digital readout like that and think that's exact. It's no more exact than making it off of a ruler or something like that. That last digit's a guess. So when it wavers like that, that's just showing you its level of precision. Okay? Now, they set up in a ring stand like this, making sure to clamp it way up here near the top so they can heat the entire sample. And for this, you really need a cool flame. It doesn't take much to decompose sodium bicarbonate. Okay? So I don't know if you guys can even see that flame, but it's a cool flame. I'm not, this hot flame works, but I like the cool flame better, and I'll tell you why. Let me get it heating first. Okay? Right away, you can start to see, let me lower it a bit there. you can start to see some condensation in the test tube. You'll see more of that in a bit. The other thing, I've got some universal indicator and a little <laughs> paintbrush. That's some uh, glass wool on the tip of it there. Then I'm going to put a little universal indicator on the tip of and put this inside the mouth of the test tube. And right away, do you see what color that turned? Okay. It went from a green to a yellow or orangish. Okay. Put it back in there. And they make note of that. That's a nice little acid change. So now we can see the condensation. There's plenty of water. I like to make these observations because they can figure out what the products are on their own. And there's some kind of nonmetal oxide being given off here as well that's causing us to have this green to orange reaction of the universal indicator. They figure out from the lab sheet that that must be carbon dioxide. And they continue to heat this for some time. They're instructed to move the flame up, up and down the course of the, uh, the sample there. And they also, of course, need to heat it up here to drive off that moisture that was produced. So we're going to let this continue to heat right about there for a while. It takes about five minutes. We might come back to this. In the meantime, we're going to see what kind of Calculations. I'm going to be going to the board now. So, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll need that. Thanks. First off, what reaction is going on here? Well, we start off with sodium bicarbonate. Oh, and I like to have the students learn the little descriptors there, solid, liquid, gas, and so forth. 
we can see that there's moisture on there, so we know one of the products is H2O, and it's actually coming off as a gas as we continue to heat it like that. It condensed on the cooler part of the test tube, but then it got driven off as gas eventually. And the fact that that universal indicator turned red told us that there was a non-metal oxide, and you look at what's left here, the only thing left is the carbon. It's not sodium oxide being given off. It must be carbon dioxide. So the students figure out that CO2 gas. When I first developed this lab, I had the students held a, hold a lit, a lit splint by the mouth of it. And the splint would go out, kind of. But you could argue that it might be the water vapor putting out the splint. That wouldn't be definitive for carbon dioxide. So that's why I switched it to be that little um, paintbrush with the uh, universal indicator. And then I have to kind of fill them in on what's left over, because there's a couple possibilities. But it turns out what you're left with is sodium carbonate. Now I give them the name for it, sodium carbonate. And they have to recall that the correct formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3 to balance charges. And then they have to balance the overall equation, which actually <laughs> is pretty easy to do. <laughs> I think that just about does it there. We have two sodium, two sodium. Two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two carbon. Oh, wait, do I not have it? No, you're right. Um, oh, yeah, two carbon, I do. I wasn't paying attention there. <laughs> and uh, six oxygen, one plus two plus three. Good. It's a tricky one to balance and, you know, checking it, but actually easy in terms of just, oh, I only use that two there. I thought I had that right. So now comes the stoichiometry. And um, let's see, we're going to subtract these two here to figure out how much. And again, this is all open-ended in terms of not leading through it. They've got to figure this out for themselves. We got uh, 37.04 was the test tube and the sodium bicarbonate, minus 31.43. We got 5.61 grams of NaHCO3 in the test tube to begin with. My question is, I'm going to come back to my test tube here, because I think this is probably just about done heating. And there is a cooling period you want to give it. So I'm going to assume this is good to go. The nice thing about this is they can cool it plenty. It stays there as sodium carbonate. doesn't tend to absorb moisture, as some products do. We'll let that cool. And let's go back and see how close we are here. Um, if I want to figure out how much that test tube weighs now, let's think about what's in that test tube. The water was driven off. The CO2 was driven off. But sodium carbonate, an ionic substance, is a solid. That's what's left behind there. And it looks just like the sodium bicarbonate. It does. It doesn't look like anything changed. But if you compare them side by side, you'll see that this is a little bit grayer compared to the more white sodium. It's very faint. but. That's what's left over. And if that's the case, let's figure out how much that weighs. We have gram sodium bicarbonate to moles sodium bicarbonate. One mole of the stuff. I'm just going to round to the nearest unit for simplicity's sake. We have 23 plus 1 plus 12 plus uh, 48. 61.84 is the mass of the uh, sodium bicarbonate, one mole of it. What I like about this for a lab is it is the two substances involved are not in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. If they didn't balance this equation, they will not get this correct. It's two moles of sodium bicarbonate. to one mole of the sodium carbonate. And now we go back to grams. Two times 23 is 46, plus 12, plus 48 is 106 grams. I always emphasize with the students the important point, not just the number, not just the number of the unit, but the number of the unit and the substance in each one of these steps. You know, I've done that. So I've got my 5.61 divided by 84. Divided by 2 times 106. 3 
0.54 grams. Now, I'm afraid to tell you that some students come up with that as their prediction for how much the test tube and contents will weigh. Hmm. What have they forgotten to do? <laughs> They've forgotten to put back in the mass of the empty test tube. So we're going to take 3.54 grams of sodium carbonate, go back and add my initial empty test tube plus 31.43 I'm getting 34.97. I'll write that down. I'm going to the board to write that down, so I have it written down. If it's not written down, it's not a true prediction. 34.97 grams. That's my target. Actually, the target is what comes up on the, on the, on the um, electronic balance. This is my shot at the target, okay? This is cooled down by now, cool enough to take this off. Okay, the balance still zeroed nicely, didn't wander at all. So let's see how close I am here. I'm a little nervous, I have to say, but uh, 34.98 grams, okay? And I give them a leeway of 0.03 grams on their side, so I'd be giving myself a high five right there. And literally they do that during this type of lab. When that happens, they're predicting 34.97, they hit 34.9899, they're or right on the money, and it's, you know, this is a matter of the scale. Um, they really do give high fives, they celebrate. That's a 10 out of 10 right there. So, a nice little stoichiometry lab, one that involves heating baking soda, seems pretty simple, and one that gives really nice results. Thank you. <laughs>